And are there any kind of eligibility criteria for these intensive treatment protocols that we can apply to real world uh, practice? Yeah, I think this is one of the advantages of how the Optimum trial was run in that it already included a lot of community hospitals, a lot of, um, you know, um, sites that are not um, offering treatment that is just impractical or unrealistic for many people that are treated in the community. Um, many of the treatments that are given in that trial can even be delivered out of hospital. We have in the UK, uh, an increasing system whereby patients can get medications shipped at home. Uh, they need to be seen regularly, of course, in their hematology practice, but they can apply the treatments sometimes per subcutaneous injection themselves at home if they're trained up. And of course, there need to be the right safety protocols in place. Uh, but if that is the case, then actually these treatments are really deliverable in, uh, in, in, in a standard setting with many patients. I think what it's always uh, with myeloma challenges that it's a disease of patients that are normally older than 50 years. So of course we have patients that are either having uh, comorbidities and reasons why they cannot have some intensive treatment. And to be fair, it should always be a joint decision making. Some patients, if they are really at an advanced age, they might also say, well, that, that's not my priority. You know, I don't want, um, to be on treatment that late in life. I think that that's actually, of course, a lot of individualization of care that we do anyway. Mm -hmm. But outside of that, I would say generally patients that can tolerate treatment can definitely tolerate the treatment that has been developed in that trial. So um, you mentioned some of these um, treatments being able to administ be administered at home and that some of these are quite prolonged treatments. How? What are some strategies do you you think would help patients maintain adherence to prolonged treatment schedules? Yeah, I think especially um, for high-risk myeloma, I would say on the personalization in care myeloma is the knowledge that you have high-risk myeloma. It's such an important bit. Um, it's the communication. It's actually having access to the diagnostics and actually um, now us having really reliable data to say, well, this is actually something that we can change. If you adhere to treatment, your outcome will be better. I think a lot of it is about that. Outside of that, I think it is mostly the a very good doctor-patient relationship, also care team relationship with nurses to be vigilant about side effects because as a, uh, you know, many side effects can, through changes in the treatment, that sometimes can be minor, it can be an extra week break, they can really be addressed. It's um, it's rare that we have a patient who can just simply not tolerate treatment at all. Uh, and it's better to talk about it. That's the most important thing. Talk about what the challenges are. And if need be, sometimes one has no other chance, but often, often the treatment can be just changed slightly so that it's tolerated much better.